everybody, this is Patrick from Travels with Delaney. In this week's video, I decided that I would share with you how I go about making coffee in our trailer and quite frankly, sometimes here at home as well. So over the summer, several of you had commented about um, when I had taken some scenes of coffee being brewed in the morning, wanting to know exactly what I was doing. So let me just give you a little history. Number one, I love coffee. Um, I drink it throughout the day typically. And so when we're traveling, I do want to have that ability to have coffee. And in prior trailers, I actually had a curry coffee maker that I would take with me. Um, really do like the curry coffee maker, have one here in the house. However, if you're boondocking and you do not have electricity, then your Keurig or your traditional coffee maker will not work. And so I ended up going the route of a pour over. And the way a pour over works is you just basically boil water and then pour that boiling water over the top of the coffee through a coffee filter and then it brews down. And so by doing it that way, we're able to eliminate the need for electricity when making our coffee. Now there's lots of different pour overs out there that you can buy and I looked at several this past spring. The one I ended up choosing was the Melita and this Melita is plastic. Now when you go out looking for one, you're gonna find that a lot of them are made um, out of like a ceramic um, or with a porcelain finish. And my concern with that was number one, weight in the trailer and number two, the fact that it could break. And what I loved about this one is it's plastic, it's lightweight, it won't break, and the fact that I paid $2.99 for it at the Kitchen Collection outlet up at the outlet mall made it even that much better. In fact, I like it so well, I bought a second one that I keep here in the house, and every now and then I'll use the pour over here in the house as opposed to the curry. So this is it, I'm gonna let you take a look there, and you can see there's just a real small hole in the bottom that allows the water to run through. Now. You do use a filter with this, and you can if you're really concerned about um, not wanting to have anything that has to be thrown away other than the coffee grounds, you can actually get a reusable filter. But when we're traveling, I just don't like messing with trying to clean that up. And so I actually just use, and they sell, these number two coffee filters. And you can see this particular box is Melita. Um, I ended up getting, I believe there's 100 in here, and it was $3.49 for 100 of them. And they are a cone-shaped okay, paper filter. And all you do is just kind of spread it open and insert it into your pour-over coffee maker. Once you've done that, then you can choose whatever your favorite coffee is. And so today I'm gonna to be brewing one of my favorites. It's the Green Mountain Vermont Country Blend. And so if you're gonna get whole bean and have it ground, just ask them to grind it for a normal um, drip coffee maker. And I just carry a, a, a scoop, a coffee scoop with me. And so what I like, and again, I think you have to kind of experiment depending on the strength of your coffee and how you prefer it. But I will actually typically use two of these level scoops when I make a cup of coffee. The other thing to consider is how big of a mug are you gonna be using, how much water, those types of things will all factor in. And so again, just go ahead and place it right into your filter. And once you have that done, this is going to set right on top of your mug. So I'm just gonna place my pour over right on top of my coffee mug. I've got my filter and my coffee inside. Now I'm ready to brew. Now it just becomes a situation where I need boiling water. Now, we have the propane uh, two burner stove in our Hummingbird, and so that works perfect. Um, it, it's fairly quick. Um, if it's hot out, you get a little bit of heat off that, but if you're just trying to boil water, you're not gonna have it on that long, and so I typically will use that. The other option is, um, you could use something like an outdoor cook stove if you didn't wanna heat up your trailer inside. I ended up purchasing this little metal cup slash pot. Now, I bought this at a outdoor camping store. I think maybe I paid like $10 for it. But what I really liked was the fact that it's, it's kind of designed for backpacking. So it's lightweight, again, it's metal, it's not gonna break. And I like the fact that it doesn't take up a lot of room because the handles fold out so I can place it on the stove 
and then when I'm done to put it away, it takes up very little space. So go ahead, let's boil some water. All right, because it's so cold out and I've already winterized the trailer, um, I'm actually shooting this video inside. So I'm actually boiling the water on our uh, cooktop here in the kitchen. But I did leave the kettle in the bag just so you could get a size of how small this little pot is that I use to boil my water in. The one thing I would suggest is if you end up getting one like this, always kind of set it off close to the side because these metal handles will actually get warm. So I never want them directly over the heat source. It heats them up too quickly. Once you know your water is good and hot, um, I typically just take it to a, a gentle boil. Then it's time to go ahead and make our coffee. One of the tricks I found is I get a much better cup of coffee if I actually go slow with my pour. So don't just dump all of the water in at one time. Take your time just like your drip coffee maker would do, a nice and steady stream of water. And just kind of gently pour it, and I try to make sure I get all of the grounds wet. And so that's why I'll move around my pour. And you'll actually hear as it goes through and hits the bottom of the cup. And now we just wait for it, for all the water to drain through into our coffee cup. Once that's done, we can go ahead and pull the pour over from our coffee cup. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up. You can see how it's coming out the bottom there. Once your water has completely dripped through, cleanup's actually a breeze. We just carefully pull out the filter, throw it away, and now you can see we've got a nice black cup of coffee. There you have it, how I make coffee when I'm traveling and sometimes even here at the home. I've been told by, told by some coffee enthusiasts that this is a growing trend in the way coffee is being made by people who absolutely love um, excellent coffee. And the nice thing is it's an inexpensive coffee maker that you can do just as long as you can boil your water. So I'm going to go ahead and enjoy a donut and a piping hot cup of black coffee. Until next time, we'll see everybody on down the road. Good night. Can you hear the